Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. You better go, David, or you'll be late. Yeah, plenty of time. Don't worry. But it's after 9 o'clock. Look. Oh, so it is. Haven't you got an appointment or something? Are you trying to get rid of me? No, but usually you can't get going fast enough in the morning. I am insulted. You don't look insulted. What do I have to do to look insulted? Roll my head around like a rag doll? <laughs> my heart is bleeding. I've got a right to be insulted. Since when? Since for the last 15 minutes you've been sending me on my way out into the bleak world. But, darling... But, but no buts. You can't deny it. Have you or have you not been trying to get me out of the house? I don't understand. Every other morning you act as if I were trying to keep you from going to the office. And this morning, for no good reason at all, you say I'm trying to get rid of you. Merely because I don't want you to be late. But I want to be late. I've decided that this Friday morning I am going to be late. And I am not in a hurry. David, is this an anniversary or a birthday or something I've forgotten? No, it's a very ordinary Friday morning. I find my wife's company absolutely entrancing. Oh. So entrancing that I am throwing responsibility to the winds and I am loitering in her presence. I love you to loiter in my presence. <laughs> my urging you to go is merely in self-defense. Remember that. Is that the kind of husband you think I am? I don't know what kind of a husband you am. All I know is you've got all me. All right, all right. That's the way you feel about it? You won't see me for dust. <gasps> There's not a speck of it in this house. I didn't expect there would be. Ooh. <laughs> and with that exit line, where is my hat? Oh, David, don't go. Oh, changed your song, eh? Where is my coat? Please don't rush. Have another cup of coffee. Where is my umbrella? It's not raining. Uh, you don't have an umbrella. Oh, so it isn't. And so I don't. David, what's gotten into you? You're acting like a half-wit nitwit this morning. This is the other half-wit of my personality. Half-wit or wit-out, Mr. Norton. <laughs> I hasten to impress you. All the facilities of this hotel are at your disposal. Well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, indeedy. And I'm one of the facilities. Kiss me. A kiss, a kiss, my kingdom, or a kiss. That's a horse. Come here, horse. <laughs> I suppose now you want a lump of sugar. No, you're sweet enough. <laughs> Mrs. Norton, your wiles have been successful. <laughs> you have coaxed me to stay for another five minutes, but on one condition. Conditions, always conditions. That you smile. I'm smiling. I've been smiling all morning. Like Pagliacci. Greedy Pagliacci. Oh, <laughs> that's sensational. <laughs> Look, darling. Just because Mama won't come to Chicago with us doesn't mean that she isn't going to come at all. I know. She'll visit us, be there at the time when the baby comes and afterwards. That's months from now. David, when do we have to let Carrington know that we're coming? Carrington can wait. We'll settle our personal problems first. I'm not taking you to Chicago until you've made up your mind that that's where you want to be with are without Mama, and that's final. I'm a terrible wife. Here you get a big opportunity, and I'm standing around making you feel as if maybe you shouldn't take it. I hate myself. I think you'd hate me. You think wrong. It's not terrible of me to act this way? Certainly it's terrible. It's wonderful, too. And I'd hate you if you didn't. What are you going to do today? Going over to see Mama? She said she'd be back from Long Island by 10. It's almost that now. Want me to drop you over there? Nope. David, I, I need a little more time. I've got to think I'm a little mixed up. Take all the time you want, darling. That's what time's for. Now, where's my hat? And this time, I mean it. Why, David. 
David, what are you doing here? Why aren't you at your office? Like mother, like daughter. My wife couldn't wait to get me out of the house this morning, so I come to find a haven with you, and what happens? David, how's Claudia? Oh, fine. Terribly upset last night when I told her I wouldn't go with her to Chicago. Yes, mother. She was upset. Very. I didn't want to tell her that way, but she insisted. I know. I'd already told her. She wouldn't believe me. She had to get it straight from you. It was a brutal way to let her know. You two women. Sometimes I think all of your energies go into worrying about each other. I suppose it's because you've never had anybody else to worry about, either of us. Does Claudia know you're here? Mm. Seriously, Mother. Do you think we're doing the right thing? Well, how sure can a person be, David? Yes. I think it's right. Well, I thought so, too, up until last night. Maybe you will come with us. Stay with us until after the baby's born. Claudia will need some help for a while before... She'll need some help for a while after. And after that, there'll be something else and then something else. I think I've got to untie my apron strings a little more completely, David. But, Mother, there's nothing really wrong in Claudia's wanting to be with you, especially these next months. And I want you, too. (laughs) Don't put it on those terms. What a person wants and what's right can be poles apart. As far as Chicago is from New York. David... Claudia is yours now. It wouldn't be fair to you. All right. If you want me to be selfish, I I don't think it's fair to me either for Claudia to be unhappy. That daughter of mine is never unhappy for long. You mean she doesn't show it for long. Well, there must be some way in which we can make Claudia see that she can't, well, (laughs) have her cake and eat it too. (laughs) Can you teach a person that? I doubt it. She'll have to see for herself. I suppose you won't consider going or even decide to go until Claudia makes her own decision. I won't move an inch until she comes to me and tells me that that's what she wants. But don't you have to decide soon? I don't have to do anything. It's all up to Claudia now. You've spoken your bit, I've spoken mine, and the rest is for her. She's a very lucky girl. It's not every husband. Uh, I don't know. She's got a hard job on her hands. So have you. And if I may return the compliment, so have you. I came over here to ask you to come with us. You've got more courage than I have. The invitation is withdrawn. And I'm not the least bit offended. Now hurry along to the office. That's probably Claudia now. Uh, Don't tell her I'm here. What do you take me for? A fool? Now get on with you. I've got a long conversation ahead of me. And for once, I don't relish it. Bertha, you don't have to do that. I like to come. I had an hour with nothing more to do, so I give a quick sweep up. Honestly, Bertha, you're spoiling me. I'm going to be absolutely helpless. You have enough to think about now with the baby. You must take it easy for a little while. I'm going to be taking it so easy, I'll feel like somebody else. That's good. This baby is going to be born thinking his mother is a lazy woman. That's not so good. Ah, this baby's going to be born so beautiful, he's going to be the most beautiful baby in the world. Careful, you'll swell his head. (laughs) You look tired. You are sad about something. You should be happy. I know. You must not be scared. Having a baby sometimes makes a woman scared. But there's no reason. For you, it will be fine. That's not what I'm scared about. Mrs. Norton, I'm sorry, but I don't come up tomorrow. What? I don't come up. I come up Saturdays to help you from now on. But tomorrow, my daughter Lisa, she comes to New York. Oh, you must be very excited. I am. She brings her baby, my grandchild. (gasps) I didn't know you had a grandchild. Yeah, I have. But I have never seen him. You haven't seen him? No, he was born two months ago in Maryland, where Lisa and Edward, they are, Fritz and me. We have not been able to go to see him. So tomorrow, Lisa, she comes here with a baby. You mean Lisa had the baby without you? Certainly without me. I don't see how she could face it. But why? She had Edward and then she had the baby. She was not alone. I'd feel alone without Mama, even with David. I guess Lisa's braver than I am. But that is not braveness. She has enough happiness. I'm... 
greedier. It's nice if you can have your mama. It's so nice for her. Wasn't it terrible for you not to be with Lisa? To have her live in Maryland, never to see her? Yeah, I miss her. I miss her always. But it's right I miss her. And mother, sometimes she tries to hold on to a child. But she must make the sacrifice and let the child go. That's the way. Then the child, she becomes a mother. And someday she lets her child go. So, that's life. So, that's life. And it goes on and on. Mothers, they give their children their life. And that's their gift. Seeing a child grow up must be quite a sacrifice for a mother. Yeah, but a great happiness. Your mama, she has given you to Mr. Norton, and it has made her very happy. I know, I can see it. And now she lets you go. She lets me go. And I didn't want it. Bertha, I hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow. And if you have a minute with Lisa, come up here. I'd love to meet her. And the baby. You would like? Ah, Sophie, come up. Bertha, your grandchild. You must be the most beautiful baby in the whole world. Oh, hello, darling. Good night, Mrs. North. Bertha, thanks. Hello, Bertha. David, did you have a good day? Oh, not bad. Started late, finished early. How about you? I didn't go to an auction, but I bought something that wasn't on sale. It wasn't even reduced. Well, wonders never cease. Why should they? Wonders are wonderful. <laughs> and you're the biggest wonder of them all. Is that bad? No. It's good, yes. <laughs> well, take off your hat and stay a while. Oh, no, not rushing me out of the house tonight, huh? Never rushing you out of anything. But don't get too comfortable here, David. No, I thought so. Where are we going? A long, long way. We are here. Yeah. Yep. Farther than we've ever been. Imagine, Bertha never saw her grandchild till tomorrow. Isn't that wonderful of her? And Maryland isn't half as far away as Chicago. Darling, you haven't grown an inch. But you're getting taller every minute. That's a funny thing to say. Pretty soon I'm going to have to look up to you. Only if you hold me up, darling. Without you... I'm a very little girl. That's what you think. Do you think Mama would mind flying when she comes to visit us? She'll get to us that much faster. You want Mama to fly? You don't care how much I worry, do you? These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. What will I serve them, you sometimes wonder, when the doorbell announces surprise visitors. But when you have plenty of refreshing Coca-Cola on ice, you don't have to give refreshment a second thought. You can greet unexpected company as cordially as you do invited guests. And somehow, even a casual call turns into a party when you say, have a Coke. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. Refreshes.